Okay, so this video is gonna be about how to get audio quality like MKBHD. A lot of his audio quality relies on his amazing microphone, which is called the Sennheiser MKH416. This is a microphone that counts as what's called an XLR microphone. And if you haven't encountered the XLR peripheral before, it's really kind of confusing. There are some guides on it, but I didn't feel like there's any that just told me, okay, what do I need in order to actually use this thing? How do I just use this microphone so I can record my voice? So this is the video that I wish existed uh, for myself back when I was trying to figure out this whole microphone thing. MKH416 is this microphone. Um, um, I've got it connected to a boom stand and when I say boom stand I mean like this this physical thing here as you can see I wanted to get the microphone as close as I could to the audio source which is my own voice and that increases the quality by quite a lot an XLR microphone it specifically means this particular port and this particular cable so I'm gonna unplug this actually for a second just to show you and basically it kind of looks like that um, so you can see it's got these three little dots there. It's a very thick sort of cable, so it's probably about as thick as my finger. And then we're gonna plug it back into this thing. Now, you might be wondering, like, why do I have this external recorder thing? Like, what the heck is this phone looking device? This particular one is called the Zoom H5. And so XLR microphones, unlike your typical 3.5 millimeter head jack microphones, I think that for the most part, they need a preamp. I could be completely wrong about that. What I ended up having to do was I actually bought this thing called the Zoom H5. The microphone connects by this XLR cable. And so that acts as a kind of preamp because what that means is that I can actually have a very fine control on the audio and I can also, like, just the amount of audio that is going into the microphone, when, in other words, the input gain and that sort of thing. I'm not gonna to get too much into the weeds here, but basically to sort of summarize what the Zoom H5 does, once you've plugged it in, one of the things is you can see that this one here is lit up. That means because this is actually the one here which is connected to my microphone. So you wanna make sure that that button is pressed because if it's not, then it's probably not recording anything. If you don't have this lit up to start off with, probably it's that your thing might be in stereo mode or something like that. I've got only one microphone so in my particular case I want to use a thing called a multi track and that although the name is multi but what it means is that like if I connected different microphones from different places it could like compile those all into one dot wave file but in this particular case I've just got a mono thing so I've got one microphone I'm going to stop recording this for a second just use my uh, camera audio again so I uh, go back to menu so there's a menu button on the side here um, and you click that and you can use this wheel here to sort of scroll up and down. So I'm gonna to go to um, my, my recording mode and I want to make sure that that mode is set as a multi file. Uh, the reason for doing that is that if you set it as a stereo file, what annoyingly happens is that every bit of sound goes to one ear, <laughs> like it goes to your left ear. Uh, so you don't want that, you want a multi file instead. I've still got my audio off, uh, so sorry if the quality is not that good, because this is just using the camera microphone at the moment, uh, but I will go back once I actually can start recording this device again. Now, there's a few things I need to talk about. Uh, so there's a project mode uh, and there's a folder thing. I don't really use the project that much but what you want to know about the folder is that once you have that card in there then it will save to a particular folder um, make sure you use a blank card because you have to format it on this device and then you can select the folder that the um, sort of audio goes to by using this you've got this um, thing called in and out and this is actually really important to use for a microphone because the in and out is the only way that you can set up what's called phantom power in other words you have something that actually powers the microphone it gets powered by the zoom h5 itself and this is the in and out setting and then you you go to in one slash two phantom and then you go to on slash off and then you set that to input one which in this particular case is because of input one so what this does is this actually makes it so that power goes to the microphone uh, from the zoom h5 i think the most important one to know is that there's sd card function problem is that this little thing on the side is kind of flimsy. <laughs> so like the bit where you can open and close the SD card is like a bit flimsy. So what you can do instead, you get um, this mini USB cable that actually connects onto the side, mini USB -A cable, and it plugs into the side of this particular thing here. When you plug it in, you've got uh, the other side of that, which is just the uh, USB, USB A sort of cable. What you can do is you can plug that into your computer and then you can access the Zoom H5's SD card, kind of like a hard drive or like an SSD that you've just plugged in. To do that, you go to this mode, which is USB. You go to SD card reader, 
uh, and then it becomes an SD card reader. So now if I plug this into my computer, it will just display like a, like a hard drive that you have. And then it'll show you all your projects and you can actually transfer it to your computer like that without actually having to take the SD card out of the Zoom H5 itself. All right, so I've gone back uh, and now this is again using my really nice sounding uh, audio quality. To sort of summarize everything, MKBHD uses the Sennheiser MKH416 microphone. He may or may not use the Zoom H5, but that's personally what I use. One last thing I should mention is that if you're a Final Cut Pro user, what you can do is you actually take this audio and then you import that audio and as you import the video, select those two things. If you click on synchronize clips, then it will actually merge the timelines together correctly. So that's really, really simple. So yeah, hope that was enjoyable. This is Dr. David Lee signing out and I'll catch you later.